On this day two years ago, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was released. It's been two whole years since Respawn knocked it out of the park with their first venture into the Star Wars universe. In what was at the time a slew of disappointment and wasted opportunities with the Battlefront franchise, Respawn came in clutch for EA and realistically saved what was a rapidly declining reputation given EA's early tenure of the Star Wars license. Now in the past, I have dubbed Fallen Order as the most important Star Wars game of recent memory because it's the only Star Wars game under EA that's come out that hasn't been hollow, pay to win, or too niched for its own good. There was no speed bumps in the release schedule, a complete game upon release that critics loved, that fans loved, and actually offered up a little bit of a contribution to the Star Wars canon with callbacks to some of the biggest moments of Star Wars up until that point, seen from different points of view. This game actually felt like it mattered, a complete and well put together game where the flaws are excusable because what is there was just that damn good anyway. So seeing as it's been two years to the day since the release of Fallen Order, I decided to jump back into it in preparation for this video and play through the game again, as I haven't played it in its entirety since December of 2019. And I just knew that I had to make an annual release video on this game as it truly is one of the best Star Wars games going around and with its sequel surely right around the corner, why the hell should we not head back to Bagano to say hello to Satan himself? So looking back a few years before Jedi Fallen Order even came along, there was once a time where EA were completely focused on making Star Wars a multiplayer experience and nothing more. According to EA at the time, nobody even cared about single player games, it was all about multiplayer. Therefore, the Battlefront franchise, and here we are in 2021 and boy, things could not have changed more. These days, EA seem to be allergic to Battlefront and are instead focusing on mobile game garbage and hopefully that Fallen Order sequel that everybody wants and is just so overdue to be announced. But a few years ago, it was a miracle that a game like Fallen Order survived the constant cancellations of Star Wars games. Fallen Order was the exception and EA saved themselves big time with the release of this game, leaving the microtransactions at the door and just letting Respawn make a single player Star Wars game made purely for the player and not the investors. And what do you know, it made a ton of money anyway because it was actually a great game, who would have thought? EA through Respawn had delivered a player-friendly game with no pay-to-win mechanic, a complete game upon release that was actually worth the price tag. And the success Fallen Order saw as a game was thoroughly deserved because Respawn had barely put a foot wrong. There were small caveats to that, but for the most part, everything was great. And they realistically saved Star Wars game's reputation under EA even though that work would be undone about a year later when Battlefront 2 kicked the bucket and Star Wars games virtually became non-existent, which is something we're still dealing with today, but, uh, well, only up from here. One thing that to this day keeps Fallen Order in such high regard in my mind is its characters. Characters in video games are important, like, obviously, you know, they're only the vessel that drives the entire story, but Jedi Fallen Order's characters just hit different. This is one of three single player Star Wars game stories that have been told under EA and I'm just completely amazed that Fallen Order's characters have way more depth and development in their pinky fingers than any of the characters from the Battlefront 2 campaign or the Squadrons campaign. Now I know it's probably a little bit unfair for me to use Squadrons and Battlefront 2's campaigns as comparisons for Fallen Order's single player story but it's my video, I'll do what I want. So when I think back to the Squadrons campaign, I actually cannot remember the name of one of the characters that wasn't Hera Syndulla or Wedge Antilles, and that's because I already knew who they were. Then I take a look at Fallen Order. There isn't one of these new characters that I don't know. Everyone is memorable. Every character has a reason to be there, a story, a motivation, an end goal. A Star Wars game with characters that are actually three-dimensional and believable. It's nice seeing some modern Star Wars characters that don't have the personality and motivations of a cardboard box. We don't really get that in the movies, except for a couple exceptions. We do get it in The Mandalorian, which again, The Mandalorian is an exception because it's just that damn good. But it is nice that the story group behind Fallen Order actually managed to do its characters well. Some of my favourite characters introduced in Star Wars since the Disney takeover are actually in this game. Cal Kestis, a great, likeable, believable young Jedi that doesn't feel like the second coming of bloody Starkiller. 
the second sister, a broken, tortured former Jedi Padawan that fell to the dark through the worst ways imaginable. Taran Malakos, a former Jedi general who survived Order 66 and fled to Dathomir, where he takes over the Knight Brothers and succumbs to the dark side. And Knight Sister Merin, a Knight Sister that survived General Grievous's massacre of the Knight Sisters in the Clone Wars. Like, that's just off the top of my head from this game. Amazing characters. Then I take a look back at Battlefront 2's campaign. Iden Versio, the commander of Inferno Squad, a badass group of some of the Empire's finest, who decides that she's a good guy now because, well, like, I guess that a campaign can happen, despite killing hundreds of rebels in the first couple missions and probably thousands before that. Then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, now nah, the Empire's kind of clapped, eh? I'm Team Rebellion now. The Rebellion was like, yeah, welcome in. Like she hadn't slaughtered countless innocents and Rebellion fighters, and we're supposed to apparently buy that. You don't get stupid things like that and contradictions of character and logic in Fallen Order, and that's one of the reasons I really love this game. It's nice to get some Star Wars media where the characters aren't totally botched by poor writing. Now, of course, you can't have a great game without great gameplay. Now, I've never really found Fallen Order's gameplay to be perfect. You know, there's a few kinks in the armor here and there, but overall, I've always found it extremely satisfying. The platforming, the unique blend of lightsabers and force powers, not to mention cranking out the old double-hilted lightsaber or two lightsabers. Like, just jumping into Fallen Order and just slaughtering groups of stormtroopers, it's fun, because by the end of the game, you can do some pretty cool stuff. That's why I think the arena mode that Respawn added to the game well after its launch was such a great idea. Although the lightsaber gameplay isn't perfect, it still warrants itself to a mode like this, and I'm really glad they added it to the game in a free update. I will say though, one thing that does get on my nerves with this game that really does hold the lightsaber gameplay back at times is that there is no dismemberment. I know it's a Disney thing that human characters can't be dismembered, but this game does suffer a bit from that. You can go chop up alien species and it feels like you actually have a lightsaber, but when you cut up human characters, it feels like you're using a glowy baseball bat. It sucks, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. I will say playing through Fallen Order again in 2021 just made me realize how well this game is put together with its atmosphere, the tone of the world, and the cutscenes. The cutscenes in this game are nuts. Whether it's the dialogue exchanges between Cal and Seer on the Stinger Mantis, whether it's antagonist characters spurting out exposition to our hero, the cutscenes, I always found them super engaging and extremely well done. Often in video games, I'll completely clock out during cutscenes because they just feel like they're there to be there. Maybe that's my fault for playing a lot of Ubisoft games though, I don't know. But with Fallen Order, it's different. There are two games that have pulled me in and immersed me with its story and cinematics to the point where I truly felt like I was fully immersed and nothing else mattered. And those two games are Red Dead Redemption 2 and Jedi Fallen Order. Some standout moments for me are the opening sequence of the game, where we meet Cal Kestis and he sets off to do his job as a scrapper on Bracca. And along the way, we get every form of introduction we need for Cal Kestis himself, as well as the current state of the galaxy, just from remnants of the Clone Wars scattered throughout this scrap planet. Respawn done a really great job setting this game up without falling into cliches of heavy exposition. The scene where Cal wipes away the dust on that old Jedi fighter of the Jedi Order symbol, that tells you all you need to know. Another standout moment in this game, I think, is the interactions between Taran Malakos and Cal Kestis when they discuss how the Jedi fell way before Order 66. It's cool seeing characters who survived looking back and showcasing how the Jedi were kind of dumb and lost their way in the lead up to the events of the prequels. It's really cool seeing these characters talk about that kind of stuff. And of course, I can't not talk about the game's finale in this video. Vader's arrival in the game's climax was just the cherry on top of a great game. Now look, I've seen some pretty shit takes that Vader's appearance was just cheap nostalgia and didn't need to be there. And it's just like, was it though? I don't know how you can play through this and not love Vader showing up here. It makes sense that he'd be front and center in the story being told. Like, do you really expect Vader to sit aside whilst a surviving Padawan cuts down Inquisitors, the very people whose purpose is to hunt down the remaining Jedi? Of course the dude's gonna step in. And Respawn knocked it out of the park with Vader in this game. His appearance was brief and they didn't overdo it. When Vader shows up, you just know you're screwed. 
I mean, Trilla's face says it all when he shows up. Not to mention, they play Anakin's dark deeds when Vader shows up, which is one of my favorites of Revenge of the Sith soundtrack. So Vader's appearance was brief, but memorable. I can't say it's going to play the same in the sequel, though. I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Vader in Fallen Order sequel if they continue Cal Kestis' story, which I assume they will be, and I really hope they do. Now, we've got to talk about the planets and locations in this game. Like, this game looks incredible, and every single planet on display here is done so well. I will say Bagano is probably the most boring of the planets, but it's still pretty fun to explore until you find Satan himself. Then it's not fun anymore. Now, even though Fallen Order isn't an open world game, there are moments where the game's level design kind of tricks you into thinking that it actually is. And I think that's on full display on Zepho. I can't tell you the amount of times that I got lost on Zepho because it's just got endless tombs to explore. The map feature, which is supposed to help you not get lost and navigate around the place, I didn't really like that, to be honest. It's one of my problems with this game because it just didn't really help at all sometimes. And I did get stuck in the tombs of Zepho for hours and hours and could just not get out. It happened when I first played the game and it happened when I revisited the game in 2021. But when you get in the groove of exploration, exploring every nook and cranny of Zepho or Dathomir is really enjoyable. I don't want to say it's rewarding because half the time your reward for exploring is a poncho, which I hope isn't a key feature of forcing exploration in the next game. But the Force Echoes, they were pretty cool though. I'm fine with them bringing them back. It ties into your progression and does a little bit of world building in the process. Now, one of the biggest masses of appreciation I have for this game is the journey you take to Ilum. Clone Wars viewers would have recognized Ilum immediately as it's where Padawans went to get their crystals for their lightsabers. And we get to do that with Cal here in this game, which is something I just did not expect to see at all. This game really did cater for people who, you know, were pretty hardcore into the prequels and the Clone Wars in particular, which I appreciate. The flashback to Order 66 hits just as good now two years on from the game's release as it did back when I played it when it launched. This was done so well and you can't go wrong just watching the cinematic itself. It was really cool getting an alternate point of view of one of the most devastating and important events in the Star Wars timeline. So overall, Jedi Fallen Order playing it again two years on from its release, I had a great time. There were some cool little nuggets of information that I didn't pick up on the first time I played the game, even though I damn near 100% completed it, I found that even though it's two years later, there was still plenty to discover. But this game, even though it's only been around two years, holds up super well. I probably enjoyed it more the second time round, to be honest. An enjoyable gameplay loop, incredible planets and locations to explore, great characters that I'd love to see more of, excellent villains, fun boss battles, fun force powers to yeet stormtroopers off cliffs. It's all great. I had a lot of fun jumping back into this game for its two year anniversary, and I'm sure it won't be the last time I play it. I'll probably do the exact same thing for its three year anniversary in 2022. Until then though, let me know down in those comments your thoughts on Jedi Fallen Order. And while you're at it, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. I will be uploading videos on Battlefront 2015 for its six year anniversary tomorrow and Battlefront 2 for its four year anniversary the day after that. So subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss those. And I mean, you should probably just do it anyway. Otherwise, BD1 dies.